Lord Jesus, you humbled yourself to wash the feet of your disciples. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you commanded us to love one another as you have loved us. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you gave us the Eucharist as the sacrament of your love. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord sent to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt. This month shall stand at the head of your calendar. You shall reckon it first March of the year. Tell the whole community of Israel, on the tenth of this month, every one of your families must procure for itself a lamb, one piece for each household. If a family is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join the nearest household in procuring one and shall share in the lamb in proportion to the number of persons who partake of it. The lamb must be a year old male and without blemish. You may take it from either the sheep or the goats. You shall keep it until the 14th day of this month, and then, with the whole assembly of Israel present, it shall be slaughtered during the evening twilight. They shall take some of its blood and apply it to, and apply it to the two doorposts and the lintel of every house in which they partake of the lamb. That same night, they shall eat its roasted flesh with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. This is how you are to eat it, with your loin skirt, sandals on your feet, and your staff in hand. You shall eat like those who are in flight. It is the Passover of the Lord. For on the same night, I'll go through Egypt, striking down every firstborn of the land, both man and beast, and executing judgment on all the gods of Egypt. I, the Lord. But the blood and executing, and ex but the blood will mark the houses where you are. Seeing the blood, I'll pass over you. Thus, when I strike the land of Egypt, no destruction, destructive blow will come upon you. This day shall be a memorial feast for you, which all your generations shall, shall celebrate with pilgrimage to the Lord as a perpetual institution. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God. The responsorial sound. Our blessed cup is a communion with the blood of Christ. Jesus, 
On the night he was handed over, took bread, and after he had given thanks, broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, also the cup, after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the death of the Lord until he comes. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I have given you a model to follow, 
so that as I have done for you, you should also do. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Brothers and sisters, be with me. Today is the day that Judas betrayed Jesus and sold him for 30 silver pieces. It's also the day that Jesus officially and formally established the two sacraments, that of the priestly ministry and the Eucharist. It's also the day he gave them the great commandment of love. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. We start with the betrayal by Judas of Jesus. The Jews had a custom of kissing each other every day. Those who had slaves were known as masters. So masters and slaves had that relationship of kissing each other. But slaves were the ones who did the kissing and the masters received the kiss from their slaves. Whatever a slave encountered, his master or her master, she would prostrate on the floor and kiss the feet of his or her master every time they met. A second type of kiss was between a teacher and a student. Whenever they met, the student would kneel on the floor and kiss the hands of their teacher. In the second type of kiss was among equals. Thus, if Mr. Tai and myself meet, we would kiss each other on the cheek while standing. Not kneel, not in a prostrate, because we are equals. So those three kisses were the expressions of affection for one another. Now Judas was a student, a disciple, and Jesus was his master. So the kiss he applied was for him to prostrate, to prostrate and kiss his feet. So when he said, the one I shall kiss, get hold of him quickly and take care of him. That's how he did. And I was listening to some old teaching of a bishop who was speaking for his own priest on the day like today, the day of priest. And this bishop was saying it's very hard to be a priest. Priests are always misunderstood. They are always misinterpreted. And people mistreat them to the extent that some decide to quit the priestly ministry or to go from one place to another. And they get hurt sometimes by their bishops and sometimes by their fellow priests and also sometimes by their parishioners. So they priest, the priest's life, he said, is very, very tough. And then he said, the one who knows the soul of the priest must himself be also a priest. Then he will experience what it means 
to be a suffering priest. I've been a priest for 50 years now. And I've gone through all those phases and I've experienced it. I think it was true. I believe it was true because I have experienced it. But today being the day that Jesus instituted the sacrament of ordination, imparting his divine powers to human beings to assist other human beings, I want us to pray for priests who receive the call to become priests to say, yes, I will do it, although it is tough. Tough in the sense that first it's a lonely life, so priests need company. They need friends who understand them, friends who console them, friends who will be there when they need someone to help. Of course, they are not great out of choice, but that does not mean they should have no friends. And I would imagine that priests are the friends of their parishioners. It's been like this all the place, all the time. But in some cases, it's been just the up the other way around. So I want us to recall that a priest is a gift given to the parishioners for the sake of their spiritual growth. But this man who has been given for our spiritual growth has to be cared for. I know you've been cited something to live on, but that's not all. They need more than that. They need company, they need consolation, they need attention of some kind. If they, they do something wrong, don't spare them, but speak to them nicely. So the Father can we talk. I need to talk to you. And they'll be grateful if you can talk to them. If there is misunderstanding, it will be solved amicably, friendly. I want us to practice that virtue. That attitude encourages priests to carry on in spite of their dif difficulties. It encourages them to hang on to their priestly ministry in fight in spite of the problems they are facing when they are assigned. When a priest, loneliness or misery is not acknowledged, is not first realized, or so this, this man is miserable, try to identify your priest the kind of life they have. Are they miserable? Are they happy? Are they satisfied? Are they complaining something inward? Some can't speak. There are some who are outspoken by birth, as are those who are born speaking. But most of us are born crying. Those who are born speak, they will tell you openly, I don't like this, I hate this, they don't come to me, they'll do so. But some, most of us who are born crying, we just internalize the pain. And it's very dangerous. When you internalize something like that, the consequences are you break down. And those who are smart enough, before they get up, they quit. But quitting is giving up. And this is very sad. If your priest gives up, his ministry, his assignment, his appointment. It's not a good sign. Something is wrong somewhere. Somebody had noticed it but never called the attention, never came to the help of this poor priest who has something crushing him inwardly. So love your priest. Pray for them. And today, Holy Thursday is the day all priests were ordained officially for the first time by Jesus himself. So since it is that universal birthday as priest, or universal, not birthday, I would say anniversary of the priestly ministry, I want us to pray for all priests, both dead living and those years to come. We need priests because they are the administrators 
of the Blessed Sacrament, which is the first sacrament Jesus instituted. They are the administrators. They are the servers who serve us in the body of Christ. And I also want you to be sympathetic to those priests who have given up. And your sympathy will be extended by the prayers you offer for them. Just write a short note. Father, you are not alone. They are there for you. They are praying for you. Be kind. Stay home. Such things are very minor. They don't cost you much, but they pay a lot. They achieve a lot. And when someone receives such encouraging notes, encouraging cards and memos, they feel needed, they feel useful, they don't feel useless as some of us would feel when faced with impossible circumstances. So on Holy Thursday, the whole Catholic Church universally prays for all the men who have offered themselves to follow Jesus as ordained ministers. But today also, when I say I talk about priests, let me talk about the universal priest priesthood, which all of us baptized are priests by baptism. Our baptism makes us priests, makes us preachers, advocates, makes us ambassadors of Jesus Christ. So you as parents, if you bless your kids, you are a priest to your kids. Let those kids learn from you how to be a Christian in practice. Be an example. It's easy to preach in that I'm doing now. It's, very, it's okay. But to practice all that preaching is another pair of shoes altogether. So what I'm asking you, my friends, including myself, is to practice what we preach to others. For me, what I preach to you, I have to practice it. For you, what you preach to your kids, you have to practice. If you tell them one thing and you do the other, they see you doing something totally different, they say you are cheating, you are lying. It's a shame for a parent to be told by their kids that mom, you are lying, dad, you are lying. So don't tell lies to your kids. Do what you preach. Do what you tell them to do. Let them learn from you how to do it, when to do it, and how often to do it. If your parent fails to encourage his sees to come to church, they say, oh, my kid is sleepy, he sleeps sleep late, he doesn't wake up early, he goes to bed very late, so he sleeps in. You sleep in on Sunday? Can't you sleep in on Sunday? Or oh, Friday to Saturday? Or oh, Sunday to Monday? They have to, they have to go to school. But to go to church is not that important as going to school. I don't preach to the choir when we talk about this to parents. And I have no kid of my own. They say you are preaching to the choir. I'm not trying to preach to the choir. Just to remind ourselves of our obligation as priests. Me as an ordained minister, and you as a universal priest through your baptism. It's our day to pray for one another. It's our day to be concerned about the welfare of another person. It's the day for us to pray for those gone before us. They may have had no chance to prepare for death. Pray that God remembers the good things they did and reward them with life eternal. We still have three more days, Saturday, Sunday, it's Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. God willing, we shall be meeting here all today. I was a bit late. I thought it was 8 o'clock. Baba reminded me, the deacon reminded me, I said I'm on the way. And Father, he said, Father, I'm sweating because I'm fully invested. Come over. <laughs> And I said, I'm on the way for that. I thought it was 8 o'clock. See, this age already, I said, yeah, I'm over 50 years old. What do you think of 50 years? My mind is getting low in memory. But I'm now everything is written down. I'll read it every time I go home. God bless you and I wish you a happy Easter. 
we need some more. Thank you.
sick who were anointed with this holy oil experienced the compassion of Christ, the saving love in body, mind, and soul. Blessed, Blessed be God, God forever. forever. The oil of catechumens. with this holy oil, may our catechumens who are preparing to receive the saving waters of baptism be strengthened by Christ and to resist the power of Satan and reject evil in all its form. The Holy Chrism. anointing with holy oil, perfume chrism. May children and adults who are baptized and confirmed and presbyters who are ordained experience the gracious gift of the Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this wine to offer. Fruit of the vine and the work of human hands, it will become our spiritual dream. Blessed be God forever.
sacrifice and you as may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice in your hands. Praise the Lord God's name for our good and the good of all God's holy church. May the power of this sacrifice, O Lord, we pray, mercifully wipe away what is old in us and increase in us the grace of salvation and newness of life. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And Lord with your spirit. spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For by the anointing of the Holy Spirit, you made your only begotten Son, High Priest of the New and Eternal Covenant. And by your wondrous design, you were pleased to decree that his once priesthood should continue in the church. For Christ not only adorns with the royal priesthood, the people he has made his own, but with a brother's kindness, he also chooses men to become sharers in his sacred ministry through the laying of, of hands. They are to renew in his name the sacrifice of human redemption, to set before your children the Paschal banquet, to lead your holy people in charity, to nourish them with the word, and to strengthen them with the sacraments. And they give up their lives for you and for the salvation of their brothers and sisters. They strive to be conformed to the image of Christ himself and offer you a constant witness of faith and love. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints in heaven, we too give you thanks as in exaltation we are claimed. Therefore, 
as we celebrate the memorial of his death and the resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope, Gregory our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the Blessed Joseph's spouse, the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased the youth of the ages, who may, who may merit to be coerced to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Please rise and together we say the Lord's Prayer as Jesus taught us. and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. The kingdom and power and the glory are yours, the power and the Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us share with each other a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy to receive the mantle under my roof, but only say the word where my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ keep us safe for eternal life. Amen. Amen.
please rise and let us pray. We beseech you, Almighty God, that those you renew by your sacraments, they merit to become the pleasing fragrance of Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. We shall now transfer Jesus from the main church to the place of adoration for those who want to spend a few moments with him. In the Jewish tradition, each home had servants. And one of their main tasks was to wash the people's feet whenever they entered their home. This included guests and the owners of the home if you enter at the door, there is a servant with a bowl of water and they will wash your feet so you get inside clean. So Jesus did just that. He washed the feet of his, of his uh, students or apostles and this was to show that he was a servant. So he came to serve and not to be served. During Mass, Father Pierre and I, we did what Jesus did to wash your feet as a sign that we are here to serve and not to be served. But the same Jesus who was there to serve, who had washed his hands, needed company, especially when he was in deep trouble. As you can remember, after the feast, after the banquet, they went to the Garden of Gethsemane to relax, to sing songs of jubilation. And there Jesus felt that the hour has come for him to say farewell to his disciples. He went a bit further and prayed by himself. When he came there, he was snoring and he was angry. Are you guys leaving me alone? Can't you give me an hour at least to be with me? So today we don't want to snore and leave Jesus alone. Spend some time in the hall with him at least 10, 15 minutes, one hour for those who are able to do so two hours for those who are strong enough to withstand them, and to give him something, some time of your time. And he gave us seven days in a week, and six days to do our thing, and Sunday to do what he wants us to do. And today he wants us to give him at least an hour, if you can do so. Now, uh, as we transfer him to the hall, I am asking you to observe silence because he is God. He deserves respect. And if you have to go home and not go to give you a few minutes of your time, then wait until we are all here and you can crack your car and leave. But in the meantime, observe a few moments of silence. 